We're going to be making the muzzle and the nose on the kitten and her mitten. And if you're interested in checking out the pattern, you'll find a link for it in the description box below. But we're going to go ahead and start with our color for our muzzle. I'm using a white colored worsted weight yarn for the muzzle. And I'm going to be starting with a slip knot. And the pattern says to chain four. So we're going to one, two, three, and four. In the second chain of the hook, we're going to make a single crochet. So here's the first chain, here's the second chain. And I'm going to go under this front loop and then I always look for the back loop because I like to go under that as well. I'm going to make a single crochet and now the pattern says to place a stitch marker here because this will be the first stitch in our round. Now we're going to make one more single crochet. Like I did before, I always go in the top leg of the V and then I go and go under the bump. And single crochet. Now we should just have this last stitch left and we're going to make three single crochet in this last stitch. And I do the same thing. I always find that back bump because it really stabilizes this foundational round. So we're going to do one, two, three. I'm going to pull the tail just a little bit to make sure everything's nice and tight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the other side of our chain that we did. We're not going to turn our work. We're literally just going to go keep going around. It's really helpful when you're working on the other side of the chain to look for those stitches. So I have two stitches left. I have one right here and I have one right here. So for this stitch, I'm just going to single crochet and then I'm going to increase in this last stitch. And it's always a little bit folded over, but you just get your hook right underneath there. And this is the bottom part of that chain, so we don't have a back bump to go underneath. So we just go right into the top of it, and we're going to increase by making two. Now we have this nice little oval shape, and we're just going to keep working around and around. Now we're ready for round two. I'm gonna take out my stitch marker, and the first thing that we need to do is an increase. I'm gonna make the first stitch, and then I always just put my stitch marker right back in, and I'm going to increase in that same stitch. Now we need to do one single crochet. And now we're going to make three increases. So I'm going to make two stitches into every one of the next three stitches. So increase number one, increase number two, increase number three. Now we need to do two single crochet, just normally, one and two. And now we're going to do one increase. So we're going to increase right here in the last stitch of the round. So after this round, we should have 13 stitches and it's always a good idea just to go ahead and count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So for round three, we are beginning with an increase. It's the first of two increases that we're going to make. Make the first stitch, put my stitch marker in right away and then I'm going to make the second stitch of the increase, and then we're going to increase again. And 
Then we're going to make three single crochet. One, two, and three. And then we're going to increase three more times. So here's the first increase. second increase and our third increase right here. Now we're going to do four single crochet and we're going to increase once. And then we're going to increase in that last stitch. So we're going to count and make sure we have the proper number of stitches, which is 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. For rounds four and five, we're just going to single crochet in each one of those stitches. Now you have a little oval shape like this, and the next thing we're going to do is just slip stitch to that first stitch. Just makes it a little bit neater. And we're going to leave a long tail because this is what we're going to use to sew our muzzle on to our little kitty cat. And we're just going to pull it all the way through. The next thing we're going to do is take a length of yarn and mine is probably two feet long. And it's the same yarn that I used to make this little muzzle here. And I'm just going to fold it in half like this. And I'm going to take this length of yarn and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail here. And I'm just going to wrap it around the center as best as I can get it right in the center. And I'm going to do it as tight as possible. So what we're doing is we're creating this little oval, but it's giving it a little bit of shape in between here so that it's not just an oval, but it has a little divot on the top and the bottom. And it may not look like anything right now, but you can stick your fingers in there and open those little sections up and you can move the yarn around a little bit. And once you like how it looks, I just like to tie these two ends together and I pull it as tightly as I can, get all the tails out of the way, and I tie it one more time, I double knot it. I'm gonna use all of these tails as stuffing, and I'm going to make sure not to put in my tail of yarn that I'm going to be using to secure the muzzle to the kitty cat face, but I'm going to stuff the rest of this inside the muzzle. And at this point, you can still move this around if one side is a little bit bigger than the other, And I'm just going to start stuffing all of this inside. And if this tail is a little bit too long to stuff all down in here, that's fine. You can trim it as well. I would always rather have a little bit extra than not enough. So now your little muzzle almost looks like a little bow tie and that is perfect. And as long as everything is stuffed down in there, it's going to look great. The next thing that we're going to do is make the little pink nose, and this is super simple. I'm using this pretty peachy pink color, and we're going to start with a magic ring, and the pattern says to make five single crochet in the magic ring. One, two, three, four and five and I'm going to pull 
pull, it closed. And then I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch right there. Now, I'm going to leave a nice little tail so that I can sew it on. I'm going to pull it through, but instead of turning it right side out, we're going to leave it inside out. I'm just going to pull on the tail a little bit to make sure that the magic ring is closed. We're going to take our inside tail and we're just going to thread it right through the middle there. So here's the center of my magic ring and I'm just going to stick my needle right through there and pull it through. And that way both of my tails are on the same side and I'm going to use those tails to secure the nose once we put it on. Now you're going to work your pattern all the way through round 66 and this is what it's going to look like. The head is still going to be open and this is a really great time to go ahead and add our muzzle. I love being able to work when the head is open. It just makes it so much simpler. So I'm going to get a couple of pins and I like to have the tail over to the right. It just makes putting it on so much easier. I like to get it close to the eyes and I'm going to just put my pins right in just to secure it a little bit. I've got my little nose centered where the eyes are and she's ready to get sewn on. And let's go ahead and look right here. We've got our slip stitch right here. And what I like to do is just go under that first leg of that stitch. And then I'm going to go all the way inside the head. And pull it nice and tight so that it looks neat. And then I'm just going to come back up on the other side. And I'm going to remove my pin because once I get to the pins, it makes it so much more difficult. And I'm just going into the first loop there of that stitch. Something is caught. There we go. And I'm just catching those first loops on every stitch, those outside loops of every stitch going inside the head and sometimes I poke myself. And I just work my way all the way around the muzzle. And as you work, you may need to remove those pins if they get in the way. Now I'm right here near the center. There we go. Of the snout. I'm going to remove this pin. It's kind of getting in the way. And I'm always making sure that the center of my snout is still in the center of those eyes because I don't want them to move around. Now I'm right here at the center and I'm just going to go in and just catch right there. And I'm wrapped around this pin, so I'm going to take that out. And this is a little bit fiddly, <laughs> and now it's twisted up, knotted up. There we go. There we go.
and I'm always shaping as I'm sewing. Just makes it a lot easier. Just going back down. And I'm just going to continue this all the way around the little snout and keep securing it and moving those pins out of the way. And I just continually shape it with my hands as I go. going to take that stitch out because I think it's a little bit too low. I got rid of my pins and so my little snout, my little muzzle was moving around. And when I'm sewing on body parts, I usually like using a sharper needle rather than the yarn needle because I feel like it just works a little bit better. Now this would be a good time if you felt like that your little snout wasn't stuffed enough and you wanted a little bit more stuffing. This would be a good time to add a little bit of that, but I had plenty of leftover tails from the yarn that I don't need to stuff it anymore. And I'm just going to keep securing this all the way around. And I've made it all the way around the entire snout here. And I like to just play around and make sure I'm happy with how everything looks and I kind of shape it and so far so good. Now I'm going to take our little tiny little nose and it's going to literally go right here in the center of our little muzzle. Looks so cute. And I'm going to use both of these tails. I'm going to be using both of them on the inside and I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm going to thread one side and I just try to go right here in the center. And then I make sure to arrange my snout so that that little center area of our magic ring is what's right there in the middle. And then I'll do that with the other tail. Now you may need to move it around a little bit and pull these nice and tight, all these tails in the back. Make sure that it is centered right where you want it. Perfect. Now what I like to do is I just tie these two tails together and I double knot them and make sure that they're not coming off and then I actually weave in these ends just a little bit. That way this little nose is not going to come off. Very easily that is. You always want to be careful if you're giving toys like this to very young children. These really aren't appropriate for children under three years old because there are definitely choking hazards. They make nice little nursery decor or toys for children that are older than three, but I definitely wouldn't be wanting children younger than three to play with them. And then I'm just going to make a little knot there and I'll do that on the other side to secure it as good as we possibly can. Oh, look how cute. The next thing that I'm going to do is make a little black line right down the center of the muzzle and I'm using embroidery floss and there are three strands on this one. I don't like to use all six. Sometimes I only use two. I have found that one strand is a little bit too light for my taste, but I don't want to use all six. And I also don't really like using yarn for this. Just going to pull it right through here and go right in the center. And 
and it's so much easier to do this when the head is open and we don't have to worry about doing all of this when the head is already closed. Just move it over. And I'll do it one more time just to make sure. that it's nice and visible. And then we need to move this over. There we go. Now that I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and just make my little whiskers here on each side with the black floss. And then I'm going to go underneath the eyes with the white floss and I'll show you how to do that as well. But I am going to weave in my ends here with the floss. That way it's just a little bit more secure and it won't pull out quite as easily. And the great part about this is that nobody's ever going to see this because it's going to be inside the head, so it doesn't even have to be neat. Doesn't matter at all, because it's all just going to get stuffed inside. So it's starting to look like a cute little kitten right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the whiskers, and I'm starting on the side here. And I'm just going to go out about one, two, three, four, five stitches out and I'll go right back to that same spot and I'm going to go up and then I'll go right back to the same spot and I'll go down. And then I'll do that right back on the other side in exactly in that same line. So it's right here. That way they look very even. I just eyeball it and I don't get too worked up if it's not perfect or if it's not exactly the same. It's fine. It's a cat. Not, cats aren't always perfect looking and that's okay. I do try to get them on the same lines though because I do find that that makes it look a little bit nicer, looks a little bit more symmetrical, but I really don't stress out about this part at all. And I really do think that it's all of these little details that make it look so cute. Now that we've got the little muzzle, the nose, and the whiskers done, I'm going to show you how I add the little accent with the white underneath the eyes. And it's still wonderful to do this when the head is still completely open. So I'm using all six strands of embroidery floss, but you could use a really thin yarn, but I do like to have it a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna go right into the side as close as I can get, and sometimes this is a little bit hard with the safety eye backs on. I'm just gonna go right into the side there. And I'm going to hold it with my thumb, and I'm gonna go right into the other side. Just kind of tuck it under a little bit and pull, and then sometimes it gets a little bit too tucked under there and you have to pull it out just a little bit. You can see that it gives it just a little bit of detail here, and you can do it just on the side, you could do it on the top, but I like to do it on the bottom, but I change it around, but it gives it just a little bit more dimension and it just looks really cute. I love this look. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I have to do it from this angle so that I can get into that side because of that safety eye back. Here we go. And we're just going to go right underneath and go back into the other side of the eye. And that's it. Look how cute. Just going to pull that a little bit, make sure it's tucked. 
and I'm going to secure that just in the back and tuck it all in and I'll keep crocheting. <laughs> 